Last night saw the first part of a new documentary series about the investigations into the Paris car crash which killed Princess Diana 25 years ago. Well, my next guest was at the heart of Lord Stephen's inquiry and was tasked with trying to discover the truth behind many of those conspiracy theories surrounding Diana's death. Former Met Police Detective Superintendent James Scotchbrook is here alongside Royal Editor Russell Myers. Good morning, Good morning. both. Um, we, we just saw one of the headlines there, Russell, 85% of the British public didn't believe it was an accident 25 years ago. Um, how much did those conspiracy theories weigh on you as a journalist and just on your memories throughout the year of all of this? Because they haven't really gone away. Well, they haven't, no. I mean, 25 years ago, we're still talking about those theories surrounding Diana's death. I mean, uh, the, the, the absolute... Um, the, the, the history is in grained within public consciousness. And I think when Mohammed Valfred was standing there with a printout of a, you know, a mock-up newspaper saying 85% of the British public mm. believed that there was something untoward in Diana and Dodie's um, tragic, tragic deaths, um, it really uh, it, it went across society, across the world, and people thought that there must have been something untoward. And those conspiracy theories were sort of the, the dawn of the internet as well, and they sort of just spread like wildfire and, and, and gave huge, huge problems for the investigating officers, both in France and in the UK at the time, in order to try and debunk the negatives around, around this um, uh, horrific tragedy. Yeah, well, Jane, you were one of the, the senior investigating officers on Operation Paget. Paget yes. What were you tasked with? Um, so my main role, though we did have um, inputs into all, all the areas, was to speak to Diana, Princess of Wales, her confidants, to try and find out one way or the other, you know, it is about following the evidence, uh, whether she was pregnant, whether she was due to get married and whether she had any concerns for her safety. So those were the main three areas and to speak to people who may know. And, and certainly the, the pregnancy rumour, I think, was probably one of the biggest theories. I remember that all those years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a, that's a difficult one to try and navigate your way around because you're, you're having to speak to Diana's closest people, people who are hurting at the time. Mm -hmm. how, how did you do that? And, and were they willing to speak? Yes. Um, and that, that was the lovely thing, that people really wanted to help our inquiry. Um, and you take all the celebrities, whoever you were talking about, you take that out of it, they are witnesses, potential witnesses or people who can help us to do that inquiry. So with anything, you prepare and you are going there to speak professionally to people. And I think they understood that and I think they really wanted to help the Met in its, in its investigation. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, it had to be very well planned and thought out. You're right, they were all grieving. Um, and you are asking for them to part with very personal information mm -hmm. about an individual who, you know, none of us would want our personal information out there in the public. And not only is it a, a, an individual, it's a very well-known individual who really should have access to that, but we needed it to be able to find out, you know, one way or the other what what had happened. And there must have been a certain level of, of pressure on you, Jane, I don't know how much of that you felt, but because all eyes were on this case and people were desperate for answers because no one could believe it had happened. Did you feel that? I know you were aware of, you, you couldn't obviously talk to any of your friends, mm. uh, you know, you were aware of phones being tapped at the time, there were all sorts of things that must have altered the way you did the investigation. I mean, as, you don't get investigations much bigger than that, or certainly at that time. So there was a pressure, and a pressure to make sure that we got the right outcome. Mm. Personally, yes, I found it really quite isolating. Um, not that I would have discussed the case with anyone, no. but just speaking to friends um, about anything, you know, you just were aware that people would be very interested in what we were doing and what we were investigating. But when you take all that away, it's an investigation into a conspiracy where three people have lost their lives, someone badly injured, and that's what you do as an investigator. You do the best job possible to find out what happened, and that's what it came down to. And you were obviously very happy with the outcome, because there were 104 allegations initially, which is that that's a lot of work to get through, and a lot of theories. It was an exhaustive inquiry. I'm not sure when it started that we 
thought it was ever going to be that big, but we looked at absolutely everything. And I am completely, completely satisfied that we came out with the right, mm -hmm. with the right result. Well, the, the one element in, in the documentary series, we hear from, from Michael Mansfield, Mohammed al Fayed's lawyer at the time, who talks about a note that mm. Diana did have a fear that she would die in a staged car crash. And somehow, I, I think I'm right in saying this, this note got lost in a safe somewhere or was put was aside, safe, <laughs> was put aside <laughs> yeah. and didn't come yeah. to the attention, certainly the French authorities until yes. six yes. years later. How much of that were you aware of? Well, Russell, as, uh, James where speaks about stand the investigation the... looking into conspiracy theories mm. and, and one of these theories actually came from Diana herself and it stemmed from a conversation that she'd had with her lawyer, Lord Mission, back in 1995 and she said that she believed that she would be a target. I mean, after this meeting, he made a contemporaneous note of this meeting and said that uh, Diana had said that some accident, were, she believed she would be a target, some accident in her car, such as a pre-prepared brake failure. Now, this was put to the Metropolitan Police, kept in the safe, as, as you say, but didn't come to light until six years after the investigation. So all these theories were being debunked. There was thousands and thousands of pieces of information, thousands of people even coming forward with those their own theories, and it made it, it made it incredibly difficult for the for the teams. But, like they say in the documentary, they left no stone unturned, and um, and you know the the the, the result speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. Are you still surprised, Jim, by the the amount of questions that are still coming? Even I haven't done this incredibly thorough investigation, and everyone being happy with the outcome. I mean, people are still asking questions. And, and even in the documentary, they, they talk of how the investigators, they, the, the theories were, they were got at. And I know you're the first to say mm. you certainly were not. No. Um, but it's still happening. Yes. And, and I think that is the thing with conspiracies, isn't it? No one wants to believe maybe that this huge personality died as any one of us may do mm. in, in a car crash. But there were so many elements to it, to get that staged, um, for so many people to be involved, if there had been a conspiracy, for everyone to keep quiet about it, um, I mean, it, it just... We've just done the best job possible just to prove, but I think people will always wonder, because she was so large and no-one likes the fact that she's not here anymore, exactly. you know. And, uh, how do you think this documentary will sit with the princes, Russell? Because I know they, they don't yeah. ever want to see the Martin Bashir, the infamous uh, broadcast again. The BBC mm. have said they won't broadcast mm. it again. Um, but here we are. We're sitting here now talking about well, it. Well, we still. are. And, and, and I think it's, it's, it's twofold, to be honest. It's a huge anniversary. The princes, are in, on the 20th anniversary of their mother's death, said um, that that was probably going to be the last time that they would ever speak about it. I'd be surprised if we didn't hear from them on such a huge milestone. But I think that they, they have moved on. And um, perhaps we will see um, some details released with Harry's memoir. Yeah. I mean, that's coming up very, very soon. Mm -hmm. He's been in touch with the French and the UK authorities at the time. Um, and again, we have the backdrop of Martin Bouchier's uh, fall from grace, essentially, and, uh, and whether he should have spoken to the inquiries at the time. Mm -hmm. So very, very interesting indeed. Exactly. Well, thank you, Russell, and thank you very much, Jean. An extraordinary role that you played in this story that continues to, to grab headlines. Thank you very much, Jean. Um, investigating Diana, death in Paris continues tonight at 9pm on Channel 4. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.